core goals was to develop structures that are difficult to access in real life. I would like to present dynamically uh, the layers we dissected, we created five thematic units. We started with the back opening. Uh, we began the exploration of the posterior cranial fossa by opening the cisterna magna. This way the tonsil of cerebellum became uh, visible, then the vermis of uh, cerebellum and the tonsil of uh, cerebellum were removed uh, to open the fourth ventricle. We also tried to demonstrate the position of the tentorium cerebelli and the cerebellum. From the top view the tentorium cerebelli can be seen, then by folding away the tentorium cerebelli the cerebellum became deductible. The left hemisphere of uh, cerebellum was removed to expose the various lower cranial nerves all the way from the 7th cranial nerve to the 12th cranial nerve. The spinal root of the 11th cranial nerve became visible as well as the vertebral artery at the cranial cervical junction. We then continued the preparation laterally, with which our goal was to expose the infratemporal fossa. We began by preparing the superficial structures, removing the parotid gland tissue millimeter by millimeter to demonstrate the five branchial motor endings of the facial nerve. After that, we separated the zygomatic arch from the masseter muscle. A part of the zygomatic arch was removed, so we could uh, continue the exploration of the infratemporal fossa. The fibers of the temporal muscle were visible in the direction of the coronoid process and the mandibular canal was excavated. This is how the infratemporal fossa was revealed. Let me highlight just a few structures that are rarely seen in actual dissection. The inferior alveolar nerve, the lingual nerve and the buccal nerve. As we continue the exploration of the infratemporal fossa, we remove the lateral pterygoid muscle and the mandibular condyle. Uh, so the peripheral brain system of the mandibular nerve became more visible. A bone window was uh, opened around the pterygoid and uh, then the skull base was excavated up in the direction of the foramen spinosum and foramen novale. We removed the frontal process of zygomatic bone to explore the lateral uh, structures of the orbit, a part of the maxilla was removed as well to demonstrate the sinuses. Here you can see how we lead a probe through the sinus in the direction of the sphenoid sinus. What is the clinical purpose of all this? The answer to this question is to make the skull base and various other disciplines visible. Neurosurgeons, ophthalmologists, otolaryngologists and maxillofacial surgeons collaborate in this area as if uh, they were a skull based team. Let's continue with the intracranial structures. We open the lateral ventricle and remove the brain area above the corpus callosum at the level of the semioval centrum. The corpus callosum was partially removed by removing the operculums, the branches of the insula and the middle cerebral artery were exposed. Parts of the lateral ventricle were visible, the frontal horn, the central part, the occipital horn and the temporal horn. The hippocampus, a part of the limbic system, is located in the later, which as you can see continues like a fornix. The next thematic block we prepared was the basal nuclei. You can see the nucleus lentiformis, part of the putamen, which was uncovered above the insula, the hippocampus and parts uh, of the occipital and temporal lobes were removed uh, to reveal the connected parts of the hippocampus. The parts of the basal nuclei can be observed uh, in the following structures, the lentiform nucleus, part of the putamen, the caudate nucleus, and the thalamus among the diencephalic structures between which the third ventricle. The pineal gland can be seen in the center of the pineal region. The internal cerebral vein is located above it, which continues into the great cerebral vein and leads to venous blood to the straight sinus. The 
next block was the identification of the structures of the anterior and middle cranial fossa. The arteries of the circle of Willis were visible. The olfactory nerve and the optic nerve uh, can be seen in the anterior cranial fossa. The place where the trigeminal nerve leaves the brainstem can be observed and the opening of the trigeminal cave reveals the gasserian ganglion and uh, its branches. The basal nuclei and thalamus complex were removed, the remnants of which are detectable here as uh, interthalamic adhesion, while at the level of the mesencephalon, an incision was made. We continued with the preparation of the cavernous sinus. Its lateral structures are visible here, the first nerve, the fourth nerve, the trigeminal with a free division of maxillary and mandibular, the structures of the middle cranial fossa and the contents of the cavernous sinus are visible. The internal carotid artery and the sixth cranial nerve located laterally can be observed. We are not always able to demonstrate these formulas to the students. We continued preparing the anterior and middle cranial fossa by removing the anterior clinoid process and the roof of the orbit so that the cranial nerves uh, innervating the external A muscles passing through the superior orbital fissure and the continuation of the ophthalmic nerve, that is, the entire course of the frontal nerve in the orbit could become visible. We managed to create a 3D model that not only shows uh, the dissected area layer by layer, but also helps uh, students study at home on their own.